PCLabscopes.com is Craig Technologies' website for the Pico LabScope we're using. I want to take some time to attack a frequent misconception. This is not a sales pitch for this particular brand of LabScope. This is simply a presentation to show you that LabScopes are not that complicated. Now, mind you, we have a bias. We do like this LabScope because it packs up in our suitcase and goes on airplanes with us all over the country to do training programs. So from that standpoint, we like the compact size. We like being able to get on a screen and display it on a large screen. What I'm looking at now is an injector waveform. As you can see, it's jumping around. This scope is where we suggest people set things up. Let's go to the bottom left. The bottom left, I have a green button. That green button is an on-off switch. If I go to the red, it will stop and freeze the pattern. Go back to green, turns it on. When I hit red, it stops it. So if I got something jumping around I want to see, I can go see it. Those are my stop and go buttons. Let's turn it back on. Now, telling much about this pattern is hard to do because it's happened in an irregular time. And right now, I'm sweeping across this screen in 50 milliseconds. I go from one side of the screen to the other. It's painting a picture in time. In 50 milliseconds, I occasionally get an ejector pulse width. So what I might want to do is lock this in so I can make it stand still. That's where triggering comes in. Always when I start up, I start up in none if I don't know where I'm going to go because none will help me get where we're going to go. Now I'm going to go to auto, and when I hit auto, it locks in. It locks in because the last time I used this, that little diamond is my trigger. When I cross that diamond with this signal, depending on which selection I have, it's going to lock in. So watch what happens when I move it up here. Boom. When it crosses that diamond, it locks it in. Once it's locked in, I can do other things. Now notice there's several ways. It's locking in when it goes from low to high. Look at the bottom of the screen again. I am triggering on channel A, which is the only one I have hooked up. And look at this pattern right here. This is a rising edge pattern. That says it's going to trigger when it goes from low to high. Right beside it is the falling edge. If I click here, it goes from when it's going from high to low. I can pick either one. Pick the one that produces the most stable pattern. Now that I've got my pattern stopped, I've taken care of stuff on the bottom. I don't have to no longer use the red button to get the pattern to stand still. Let's go to the top. Right here I have how fast it's going. Each one of the rectangles you see in here is five milliseconds. Well, I like to see that pattern one millisecond. Boom, it's locked into place, I can expand it. Now you see what we had in our program, the same injector patterns we were looking at. If I want to see it even more detail, I can go to half a millisecond. Really expand this out and look at it. Now you see it locking in right where I had it, and you see all the patterns happening in here. Right now I'm looking at a uh, screen that's about 500 milliseconds long, half a second. In half a second I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times this injector fires in, in half a second, 16 times a second. The point we're making here, how to look at all these voltage waveforms and everything if I was trying to do this with a voltmeter. I got a lot of per time period where it's zero volts. I got time periods with 54 volts. I got a lot of time periods with 14 volts. So I can't read average voltage. I need to see it painted on the screen quickly. So I'm going to go back and do a quick job of painting. Back to our one millisecond we're looking at. Let's say I want to do something different. We've talked about the, the screens. Let's talk about setting something up. I'm going to go to automotive. When I go to automotive, I've got charging, starting systems, sensors, actuators, ignition, communications networks, advanced testing, advanced accessories. I've got motorcycle specific. I got accessories guide and I got help for more information. I'm going to do a fuel injector. That's an actuator. Now this is made by a British company. So you're going to find some strange things like injector, petrol. Now I can do a multiple voltage. I can do current. I can do voltage and current together. I can do single voltage. I can do single current. Let's go over here. 
drop down and do both. Because next, we're going to be looking at current flow. It shows you how to connect the oscilloscope, example waveforms and notes, and technical information. It tells you, first of all, to plug in a 20 to 1 attenuator. It tells you exactly how to go through and do this. Shows you examples of how it looks. Shows you how to hook up your low amps probe. Shows you what your pattern should look like. Tells you about the weight forms. Tells you what you're looking at and gives you good information. So let's go up here and say, close this window. And we close it. We're going to have two patterns on the screen. Let's talk about these two patterns. They got a red one and a blue one. Over here is blue voltage scale. Zero, 50, 60. So here's 50 volts. Uh, if I wanted to know exactly what that is, I put my pointer there and I touch it. That's 53.4 volts. That's called a smart cursor. It is 6.094 uh, milliseconds from the zero point. See the six milliseconds at the bottom? That's where we started zero. So I got a six millisecond injector pulse width. If I want to know if I've got a good ground, I come down here. I'm looking at 664 millivolts. So I've got a ground that looks pretty decent. If I wanted to know what my charging system voltage is, I come here. It says it's 10.3. looks a little low. should look at that. See how useful this is? But we're looking at the pulse width. On the right is a scale that goes up to 2 amps. 1 amp is right here. Now, I'm looking for an injector that should be running about 1 amp. What I've really got is an injector down here that's running about 6 tenths of an amp. 620 milliamp. I'm expecting to see one around 1 amp. What's happening here? Well, I don't have full battery voltage. 10.6 volts. When I don't have full voltage, I don't have full current. Does this problem look familiar to you? Now you see how we arrived at checking B+. We did this because we used voltage scales, we used current scales, and started looking at this. So this gives you a preview of what we're doing. Next, we're going to go look at AMPS probes and talk about using this AMPS probe in more detail.